Welcome to WICT UK's International Women's Day series. To celebrate International Women's Day this year, we have spoken to a number of women about their experiences, career journeys and how they choose to challenge gender bias and inequality. In this episode, we meet with Nikki Barraclough, Executive Director of National Charity Prevent Breast Cancer. We talk about her career journey, life lessons and what it's like to be a woman in a senior board level role. Well, Nikki, it's a delight to be sitting here chatting with you today. Uh, Of course, I know you myself. Uh, You are one of the most amazing women I have met. You are the Executive Director of Prevent Breast Cancer. Tell us a little bit about that and your role within the charity. So Prevent Breast Cancer is the only charity in the UK focused on the prediction and prevention of breast cancer. We're quite small, uh, but we're a national charity and we're headquartered in Manchester. So as you mentioned, I'm the exec director. I've had quite an unusual journey from the point of view that it's one of my first jobs. Um, I think it was probably my third job was as um, an assistant at the charity and I was only joining for six months and then I was leaving Manchester. And then many years later, I'm running the charity um, and I always discuss how my career has developed alongside the charity growing. So quite attached. Yeah, so that that is quite unique, isn't it? To start something that you think isn't going to be your ultimate goal and then to, to become executive director. Did it help starting off as the assistant and working your way up into that role? Do you feel that you kind of earn the respect of the people behind you? Because you're a very young lady, Nikki. <laughs> Not that young. Um, <laughs> yes, I think it did help. I think it helped with my confidence more than anything. Um, I have that thing in me where I feel like I constantly have to prove myself. So the greatest thing I've learned is I've operated at every level within the business and then put my own stamp on it. So absolutely, I've grown into the role, but um, I've had to learn to find that confidence along along the way. And what made it so special for you to want to stay with Prevent Breast Cancer? Because of course, you know, you must have had that passion there. Mm, It's quite interesting. So when I graduated, I wasn't very well. And at the time I moved to Newcastle against everyone's advice to live with an ex-boyfriend. He wasn't an ex-boyfriend at the time, but um, I started, I couldn't work for a while. And then I started working for a charity just by chance. And it was, it wasn't a cancer charity. It was a parents organization for parents from deprived areas. Um, It was attached to a nursery. And I met the most amazing woman there. He was a real grassroots lady. He, you know, she fought for everything for that center. And it made me just, really think maybe this is a direction that I want to take. So fast forward a year and a half and I went for an interview with Prevent, which was called Genesis at the time, um, and really um, started working my way up and it gets you. Like you just, you meet so many inspiring people, people who've been affected by breast cancer, people who've lost family members, um, people who just want to do something incredible to raise money for our research. And I just, I think I'm really privileged. I get to work with scientists, volunteers, supporters, and you don't get that much variety in other sectors. So I feel very lucky. And is that what drives you then, the people? It's a, it's very much up there, absolutely. Um, and also just trying to raise as much as you can uh, to fund our research because our whole vision is to create a future free from breast cancer and we've got a long way to go. So it's definitely a balance between both those things. Oh, now you've been with the charity for, is it about 14 years now? I think it's 16. 16 yeah. years, wow. What would you say is your proudest moment for Gosh. being with Prevent? There's so many, you know, like how long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. There's things like renaming the charity. So, you know, really realizing that we'd reached a pivotal moment where people didn't know who we are or what we did. But I had to convince the founding members of the charity and our volunteers that this was the way we had to go if we were going to elevate and raise more money. So from a brand point of view, I'm really proud of that. 
but from a personal point of view, there's just so many, there's too many things to mention. You, I mean, you mentioned challenges there. Um, obviously, that was a fundraising challenge uh, to, to do some good, which we do all the time with Prevent uh, Breast Cancer. But you haven't just done one challenge. <laughs> and the reason I'm touching on this is because, you know, International Women's Day this year, the theme is choose to challenge. Right. Um, you don't just talk the talk, you walk the walk, walking kind of and climbing up the base camp. You've also done a London to Paris, you yeah. know, the cycle challenge. Did you ever dream, you know, when you started out as that assistant, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be going out and I'm gonna be doing that. Are you that type of person? I didn't think I would be, but I think the older you get, the more scared you are to challenge yourself. And also, so you've got that as one, reason and the other reason is it's really hard to sell to people you need to fundraise you should do x y and z and not do it yourself because i know i wouldn't be as sold on something if the if you think well why aren't you pushing yourself to your limits and you know taking on a new challenge so i think it's a, a combination of both those things and i think you learn so much about yourself and i think that's really important as well you know there's personal development that we sometimes forget about because we're so focused on everyday life and i think just taking that moment to put yourself out of your comfort zone and really push yourself and realize that so much of it is um, your own mental barriers. And physically, we can pretty much do whatever we put our minds to. As I mentioned earlier about, you know, the senior role that you've got as mm. executive director. Um, how has that been for you, I suppose, in your career? Because, that, that's a huge role. As I said, you know, you're young, you're a woman. Have you have you found that a challenge in itself or has that been, you know, a, a good kind of route for you where you've not had any, I suppose, adversity to challenge I think in the charity sector, you'll find there's more women in leadership than probably any other sector. So I think that experience is probably different than in a lot of other sectors. However, it's more belief in myself. So growing up in an organization where you're then managing people that you were junior to, mm -hmm. um, but believe, and don't get me wrong, everyone's always been incredibly supportive, but it's that, and it's that usual imposter syndrome and mm -hmm. not trusting your gut. Um, you know, that's taken, it took me a while to settle into that. And, you know, I still have my moments where I doubt myself and reporting to a board. So our board of trustees are all, and I don't want to bring age into it, but they were all considerably older than me and they'd seen me grow up as well. So it was feeling like I had to prove myself even though I had, and they weren't putting that pressure on me. It was me putting the pressure on myself. It's knowing that you should just trust your gut instincts and also knowing when to step away. So for example, I got to Friday last week and realized I haven't had any time off. I was feeling like everything was really intense and I was probably being pretty intense to the team. So just booked Monday off and had a day away because I know I needed to be in my best possible frame of mind for my team uh, for this week. So it's knowing when to stop as well as always pushing yourself. And that I've only recently learned. But that's quite empowering when you get to that stage, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that the advice that you would give to somebody out there who was starting off on that career ladder then? You know, just to kind of think about that, give yourself a bit of a break on the way up there? Yeah, I think so. I think if you're driven, you have that tendency to not stop. You know, I'm the kind of person that if I get drawn into doing something, hours will go by. And it's being aware that whilst you might think, yes, well, I can tick that off my list, you're not doing yourself any good. So it's trying to get that balance and it's always a struggle. I, I slip back, you know, at the moment, especially with working from home more. You know, it's really easy not to break up your day and think of yourself and, you know, we all know we should go for walks, but you really need to put that, those systems in place and routine, I think is really important. So getting back to International Women's Day's theme for this year, choose to challenge, I have to ask, what would you choose to challenge? I think the fact that I am um, in the senior leadership role and working for a charity 
is that you can um, show your passion and your dedication and your emotion and your vulnerability. And you don't have to hide that. You know, it's really important. That makes me who I am, but it also sells the charity and wins support. Oh, now I'm going to take you back to your 21-year-old self, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the start of the journey of the career ladder, what would you say if you had the chance to go back to that 21-year-old? What Gosh. advice would you give them? Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Believe in yourself. And, you know... I think the past year especially, we've all had our wobbles and then you start doubting yourself, your ability. You know, I've, I've come away from work some days and said, I don't think I'm a very nice person. You start overthinking things. So it's knowing when to just take that step back, try and switch your mind off or do something different where you can just think through what you're thinking and rationalize with yourself um, because Belief is everything and trusting your gut. And what do you think that 21-year-old Nikki would say if she could see you now? I think she would be amazed that I enjoy public speaking and hosting events because I was never the person to uh, speak up. And um, yeah, I'd be very proud, I think, of myself. Thank you so much. It's been great Thank speaking you. to you. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.